everyone welcome back welcome back in today's tutorial i'm going to teach you how to create an ai agent specifically a pandas ai agent with dash and langchain now this ai agent is going to allow us to um, choose different stock tickers let's say costco tesla and apple it will graph the data frame of the stock tickers price in 2023 and then it will activate the agent and return a few statistics high prices maximum minimum uh, and then the conclusion or summary at the very end now it's doing this because we told it right here in the code that i'm going to share with you what is the data set telling us um, about the performance of the stock this is the prompt that we're giving it to uh, the pandas agent right here we're going to do this today. We're going to learn all of this. We're going to go over the Langchain documentation. We're going to go over Dash. Uh, and if you want to see the code, we have it here in the Langchain uh, education on the Charming Data uh, portal that's dedicated to teaching you Python and AI uh, in today's world. Now, this uh, platform is also good for uh, many other things that we do on a regular basis, like our projects for career development on a monthly basis we do group projects together to learn Python, to learn data apps and AI together. So come join. This is completely free and um, you're going to learn a lot. So I hope to I hope to see you here. All right. So let's build this um, data app with our pandas agent. The first thing you want to do is look at this code right here. We are importing all these libraries that we need for this data app to work. But let's go over the pandas agent first. I'm going to put this uh, links under the video. We're going to use the pandas data frame, the pandas agent in Langchain. So we have all the explanation right here. And we also have the API uh, documentation for the agent with, with all these parameters that we're going to go over as well. So how are we activating the agent? First of all, we need to load our env file our env file has this inside of it you have to replace your token your open ai token within within here so detecting the env file we're going to load it into our app and then we're going to assign it to our large language model so we have our token and then we have our model name which is the new gpt 40 which is half the price and a lot faster than gpt4 now this thing right here this prompt and the way that Panda's agent is thinking, all of this is probably about two to three, maybe four cents uh, of usage. So it's not too expensive. All right, so we have our large language model. Now, here we're going to uh, incorporate our data frame, which I put online, and we're going to change the date column. This is a data frame with a date column. We're going to change it to a Panda's uh, date time um, type. And, uh, and that's it. And we're going to focus on the high price um, column and the ticker. We have industry, we have country, uh, brand name. We don't care about that right now. We will only focus on the high column and the ticker column. So we have our data frame and we have our large language model. It's in here at the very last callback where we are um, creating our pandas data frame or uh, pandas data frame agent. We import this, this blue thing right here, module from the very top. And uh, then we have to fill in the parameters. At first, I just had this two parameters, but I added a few more. So it makes it a little bit interesting. So let's look at the parameters. We're going to go like this. The parameters are here. And here we see that we have to do we have to declare the large language model, which in our case is the, uh, the same LLM right llm you can call it whatever you want my llm just change this to my llm right here and then our data frame is going to be our filter data frame so it's going to be df but you can call it whatever you want df filter df whatever and then i'm gonna i put max iterations because a couple of times uh, it got stuck it would like iterate it would try to do a group by dis dot describe pandas method it wouldn't work it would try it again and again and it wasted a lot of my uh, token and and money right it wasted like 10 cents or 20 cents uh, on one time so i said only try twice and after tw i guess two times it just it stops verbose true so i get to see what it's thinking if i 
if I put verbose false, I would only see the output. But I put verbose true so I can see how my agent is thinking. Agent type, tool calling. This is just a type of agent right here. The default is zero short react description uh, right here. But I chose, but it didn't really work well for me. So I chose the tool calling as the other option for the agent. And I put error parsing, uh, handle parsing error true. So if there's a parsing error, don't just stop and break. Uh, just skip it or handle it and uh, and continue. So I did that. Okay, so we have our pandas agent right here, right? Now we have our agent. And now we're going to invoke the question or the prompt. What do we want from our pandas agent? And in this case, we just wanted to consider the stocks of this data frame. Uh, consider only the high and the ticker column, right? There's many different columns. We only wanted to look at the high and the ticker column and provide a summary at the end. Right? I'm printing the response. This is the response. I'm going to print it down here, the whole thing. But I'm also going to uh, return the output, only the output right here. Where is the output? Uh, now it's hard to see. Here. Here we have an output. Because the response gives me the input and the output. And I don't need the input. I already know what I asked it. I just want to print. I want to see the output right here which is the children of my markdown. This is my markdown. I'm going to go over that in a sec. That is how we're seeing the output right here. Let's try another example. Pandas AI, it's analyzing the, it's activating the agent. It's analyzing things. It's thinking, it's thinking. See how it did all that all of this and it returned the output right here only this section we want and now we see a summary of the high price minimum median for apple for tesla and at the summary at the very end so this is very cool because it's like it's summarizing what you see in the graph to a certain degree right the the data frame that the graph is using is being summarized by our pandas agent right so this is how we activated our pandas agent now, if you're interested in Dash, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Dash. Uh, if you already know about it, skip to, to the end of the video to watch the upcoming videos and join my Charming Data uh, educational platform. Why? Because you're going to learn a lot more about Python. You're going to learn a lot more about AI and you're going to do it together with others, which is the best way to learn, right? Okay, so let's go back to our code and let's see what's happening with our dash app our user interface so here we're going to give our app the layout we'll have uh, a pandas agent in dash app this is the title let's actually put the title right here not the title but we'll put the, the app here to the right so we have our title right here and then we have our drop down right here and the drop down has we're just taking the unique values of the ticker column because there's many values that Oh, they repeat themselves day after day in 2023. We just want to take the unique values and sort them alphabetically, which is why we get, which is why we get these A A A C H alphabetically. And the initial values are Apple and Tesla. These values will be initially here when we refresh the page. Then a graph where we're going to insert our figure uh, and then our loading spinner component. So when whenever we activate the last callback with the drop down it actually um it actually uh, activates this spinner and this is what the callbacks are for right this is like the heart of dash these callbacks right here we're taking the input we're going to take the value of this component which is our which is our drop down so we'll take the value a list of two stocks or three stocks or four stocks take that filter the data frame and call it DF, so it's a smaller, smaller data frame only with these rows, with these, with these tickers, and then create a line chart. The x-axis will be date, the y-axis will be the high column price, and the color will be the different tickers. So we have two different uh, colors right here, and then return this fig to the figure property of the line chart. So right here, it's going to return a dynamic fig whenever the fig updates. This returns a new fig, a new figure, line chart. Same thing in the bottom right here. We're taking the exact same input. 
We can do everything in one callback, but I made it in two, two callbacks. It's easier to see. We're taking the exact input, whatever list of how, however many tickers we have from the dropdown. We filter the data frame just like here. We activate our pandas agent and then we invoke it. We give it a prompt and then we return the um, response, the output key value, right? Because you also get uh, uh, input. We don't care about the input. We just want to see the output. And so if we do this again, it immediately activated the first callback, returning the figure. And now it's thinking and analyzing data, analyzing data. It's thinking out loud. And then it's returning um, a few analytics or um, analysis and then a summary at the very end. So this is a very powerful tool, the Pandas agent. You can combine it with many different tools in Langchain. And we will go over uh, some of these tools in future videos. All right, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned a lot. If you did, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, join me and join us in Charming Data to learn about Python, data apps, and AI. All right, have a good one.